patented sun simulator. Now I know this sounds wild, but stick with me because I have the evidence to back this up. Now, first of all, you can look up the US patent for the solar simulator on Google. Now this document goes deep on exactly how the simulator works and essentially is placed in front of the sun. All right, now let me show you a video that I took the other day of the sun and I want you to notice this reflection right here. Now here's a close up of what that reflection looks like. It looks pretty familiar, doesn't it? This honeycomb shape. Now, obviously this isn't coming from my phone camera. So how is this reflecting off the sun? Now here is what the sun looked like in 2018. And I'm not the only one who remembers the sun being this bright orange color. And now it's this white LED light. Here's a reflection up here. Certainly not the same reflection that I took with my phone. Perhaps this is why around the world, people have been reporting their sunflowers shunning the sunlight. Now this is what the sun used to look like and how I remember it growing up this bright orange light. And now it's this bright white LED light that's hard to look at and hard to be under. Now this video is not to report any fear. Once a critical mass is reached and enough people know what's been going on underneath our noses, we will be able to take down these parasites. Now you're gonna see in this video how LED lights give off electromagnetic frequencies, EMF radiation. This could be why everyone's tired. And this is exactly how you neutralize this radiation is with organite devices. As soon as you put it in front, read zero. Organite neutralizes EMF. Here's another great example of how organite pyramids neutralize EMF radiation. And they do this by emitting life force energy. You can even see it in a frozen water test. And it is crucial nowadays to be keeping good energy in your space because we are being bombarded by these negative frequencies. Oh my, what is going on? Look at this. <gasps> Look at this. I'm just zooming in and out. Wait a minute. Hold on. Okay, what is that? Why do I zoom out? And as I get closer, look at that. What in the world? That's not the way it's supposed to be, people, just so you know. I love when people say flat earth doesn't make any sense. And I'm like, like, I know. I know at first I felt like that too. You know, you start receiving information for the first time and it doesn't really make sense because you, you know, haven't technically studied it. But like the longer that I looked into it, and the longer that I thought about it, and the longer I learned new, new stuff about it and, you know, new views on things. And uh, it starts to obviously make sense. And you start to be like, oh, oh yeah, okay. Well, that's how that would work. Oh, that's how this would work. And that's how th that would work. And pretty soon you understand it and it makes sense. And you realize the earth is flat. So go ahead and stay flat, my buds. All right, sorry I've been MIA, but the Lord has really been on me about Genesis chapter three again. Then the serpent beguiled me. What is that? What is that? That word, the serpent, the snake beguiled Eve. The first time somebody was beguiled was Eve, Massa, age 5377. That means beguiled right here to deceive. When you literally look at the Massa logo, you literally see the snake's tongue. And don't tell me T minus means anything other than Satan, T minus Massa, Satan, snake's tongue. And then people are like, oh, NASA doesn't mean that. That's H5375. It means NASA, which means to lift up, to bear, lift up and carry away. Let's combine these two NASA Hebrew words. Lift up to deceive. Again, lift up NASA to deceive. Let's make a song. Lift up to deceive. Lift up to deceive. Stop being deceived. And I really need to talk about these two gentlemen. This is Werner von Braun, the grandfather of NASA, and Walt Disney. They were both 33rd degree Freemasons. One is to give you fairy tales and cartoons for children. The other is to give you fairy tales and cartoons for adults. Ezekiel 33.3 says this, If when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet, and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. 
That is why I am giving this message to you to look out for the end time deception. Jesus is coming back. NASA, the Vatican, the church, the reason why they have a huge Lucifer telescope in Arizona is to look for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins now while it is not too late and know that Jesus is not coming back as an alien that the Vatican Church is getting ready to do and to show what's going on here, guys. So, well, I think I found Mars and it's not 140 million miles away in a space vacuum. Well, for starts, this is what they say Mars' surface looks like. So I decided to search Devon Island in my search engine and like the surface is kind of the same. And you're not gonna believe this is one of the first pictures that popped up. So I decided to pull up Google Earth and check out this place called Devon Island and you're not gonna believe what I found. So you could do this yourself. Just go to Google Earth, Devon Island. Just gonna pull this up. Hit Street View. All right. Quite a few buildings there. All right. Scoping it out. That looks like a NASA symbol right there. That four-wheeler. Huh. Weird. Whoa! NASA? What in the... Alright. Mars 1? Moon 1? What in the... Well, guys, Mars is not very far. Wow. Like, seriously, guys. Like, all these rocks are in the same place. There is no solar systems. When you zoomed up using telescopes of what they call Venus or Mars, all you see is whites. And all they are, are just wandering stars. Even all the intelligent Copernican astrologists all have said the same and thought that all the planets are wandering stars. They are luminous bodies and you will see figure like it is under a swimming pool because our space is also water. Egyptians, Greek, Mayans, Aztecs, and so on says the same. If all stars have different depth by millions or thousands of years, how come those thousands of years in the sky, you cannot see distortion and no difference in luminosity? As they said, we're supposed to be flying around the galaxy and yet the same positions of constellations, our flat stationary Earth. And yes, we are not moving. All right, so you said you were a pilot for 50 years, right? Yep. Okay. Um, how often do you have to adjust for the curvature of the Earth? You don't have to adjust. You're what flying at a constant altitude above the Earth. Yep. And uh, what about Earth rotation? If you're landing on the north to south runway, do you have to adjust for Earth rotation? No, because the atmosphere is traveling at the same approximate speed of the Earth. Great. So you're, so you're flying, the aeroplane is traveling relative to the air mass that it's in. What the ground's doing is irrelevant until you land. But the ground, according to you, is moving, sir. Are you aware of how fast your Earth is supposedly spinning at the equator in one second? Uh, I, well, it would be one degree per second. I'm not sure what that is in miles. Nope, it's 460 meters a second at the equator. Right. So if you land your plane on a north to south runway at the equator, are you going to be chasing the runway sideways 460 meters every second? No, because right. you're flying in an atmosphere of air that's traveling at the same speed. Yeah, but so if you the claim, speed becomes irrelevant. But if you, claim, if you claim the atmosphere just moves with the Earth, it's the same as me saying the Earth is stationary. It would be exactly the same. 
Exactly. <laughs> you agree with me that you can't prove using your plane that the Earth is moving, right? No, I never said I could. Great. So you're a flat earther then? No. Oh. Wait, hang on. So you don't adjust the Earth rotation, you can't tell the Earth is moving from your plane. You never have to adjust for Coriolis. If the Earth, if the wind mass, the air mass is moving at the same speed as the Earth, then it's completely irrelevant. Great, but I just said it's the same thing as the Earth being stationary. So if the Earth it's is the same result, it's, yeah, it's not yeah. proof of either. Great, exactly. So like, what about, what about Earth curve? You said you don't adjust for Earth curve either. If you're, so let me ask you this. You have an instrument in your plane called the attitude indicator, correct? Yep. Okay. And that, that has a gyroscope connected to it that um, maintains rigidity in space, correct? Yep. Great. So if you fly straight and level over the Earth, and you never have to change your orientation in relation to the ground, you're flying over a flat Earth, sir. Nope, absolutely not. Okay, what makes you You're think flying that? at a constant altitude mm -hmm. above mean sea level. Correct. And if that mean sea level is flat around all, and it's the same level or all around the earth, if the earth, let's just say the earth is flat, it's the same thing, isn't it? If the Earth is flat and you're flying east yeah. to west in a circle, it's the same exact thing. Welcome to Flat Earth. It doesn't prove that it's flat. Yes, it does. It doesn't okay, prove so anything. Check this, out. check this out. See this image I've got on screen? See the... Uh, yeah. See this plane here? Okay. Oh, oh yeah, the uh, 6,000 mile long aeroplane, yep. Yeah, I'm just showing, uh, it's big so that you can see it, sir. Right? So if we shrink it down, it's still here, right? But you won't be able to see it. Yep. Okay. We're going to fly to the equator. In relation to where the plane was here, it's nose down, right? To fly to fly around this curved line, it, is this line curved? If you maintain the altitude around a globe, is this line curved? Yeah. You said you don't need to dip the nose down to account for curvature. You, you're talking about dipping the nose one thousandth of one degree constantly. A plane flying 500 miles per hour would have to account yep. for uh, just under a mile of curvature every minute. No, it wouldn't. Yes, it would. Your math, your math is wrong. No, it's not. It's actually completely correct. How big is the Earth, sir, at the equator? You I know? have no idea. No, nope. you don't. You have no idea, but you just told me I'm wrong. You don't know how big the Earth is, so you don't know how much it curves. But you just told me. It, I'm wrong. Doesn't it curve something like eight inches per mile squared? Exactly. So if we apply that now to how how much you fly in so miles per hour, that's just under five hundred miles an hour. Six hundred miles an hour. You're doing a mile a minute. So you have to drop eight inches a minute. No, you'd have which to is drop nothing. No, 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 no. You'd have to drop. You'd have to drop over about a mile a minute, sir. If you're flying over six hundred miles per hour, that's roughly a mile a minute. You'd have to that's drop. That's what I just said. It's a mile a minute, and the Earth drops eight inches per mile. So you're dropping no, eight already, inches per minute. No, that's ex that's already with the calculation done, sir. You're dropping five, you're dropping a mile of curvature per minute, not eight inches, a mile of curve per minute. You just told me the plane never dips its nose, right? You never have to just it, it dips its nose minutely, not enough to even measure. But you're the earth it, drops. You just agreed that the earth drops eight inches per mile. No, I agreed a that plane, your model claims that I'm saying that if you're flying straight and level to your destination, you never dip the nose ever. I'm flying at a constant altitude above Earth. Correct. So if the Earth is flat, it's the same thing, huh? It doesn't also, prove that the Earth is flat. Yes, it does. Also, your attitude indicator maintains rigidity in space. So if you were dipping the nose down, you'd see the gimbal base change its orientation relative to the gyroscope, but it doesn't do that. 
Yeah, like when you're 90 degrees, say, so you see you're here and you go here, does your attitude indicator now, is, is, your, is it out by 90 degrees now? There isn't a plane on Earth that could travel that far. Yes, there is. Are you joking? But yeah, I've flown to South Korea to talk about flat Earth and it took 14 hours and we flew around the globe. If it was a globe. But the airplane flew yep. like you. The FAA trains pilots to assume a flat, non-rotating Earth because the Earth is flat and non-rotating. Your profile picture actually proves the Earth is flat. I told him that before too, yeah. My profile picture is an artist's drawing. It's nothing to do with proof of anything. It proves yeah, but, the sun sits like, above the horizon. Okay, listen, I'm, I'm, I'm already sick of this discussion. I've been to 72,000 feet. I've seen it with my own eyes. Oh, I'm really, really not interested in what you think. This is 120,000 feet, so this is no curve. It's just higher than what you're claiming. What's 120,000 feet? This image you're seeing on screen, sir? It's 7,000 mile. This is 120,000 feet on screen right now, sir. You didn't see curvature from your height that you just said. So my question to you God, is if you're flying from the left side of this red line to the right side of this red line, are you flying around a curve? That's, that's what Probably, I Probably, yes. I don't know <laughs> how wide that line is. <laughs> Bro, that, was the longest the I've heard. that was the longest silence I've ever heard on a flat earth debate. Thank you. I appreciate that thought. We'll clip that. Yeah. So hang on real quick. Clip uh, whatever you like. I'm trying to figure out how wide the angle is on your picture, and it doesn't look very wide. Okay, but it's from 120,000 feet. Do you, is there a curve? Do you see curve on the screen? I can't see enough of it to tell. Let me ask you this, though. If you go to the beach and you see a boat go away from you, does the boat go over the curve? Yeah. Okay. Well, how come there's no curve at 120,000 feet? How's the boat going over the curve at three there miles is. away? Is it, can you All see right. three miles of horizon here and it's obviously Give flat? Me, obviously, I, I don't know what that photo is. I don't know if it's computer generated. I don't know who's fucked with it. It's a high, it's a high altitude. Hang on real quick. It's a high altitude balloon footage. Flat yeah, out. were you in the balloon? Yeah, but no, just to help you out here, Twat, uh, Neil deGrasse I, I Tyson. Neil deGrasse Tyson admits he's a PhD astrophysicist. He says you can't see the curve from 120,000 feet. He says it's flat. Yeah, that's been debunked. So no, it doesn't. Try again. It's on screen. Stick me. dates back over 1,000 years. This map is credited to being created by a Persian astronomer. His name was Al-Biruni and he lived between 973 AD to 1048 AD. It's the official map of the United Nations and also the United States Geological Survey. It used to be present in many places before the creation of NASA and the Antarctic Treaty in 1959. Here you see it with Admiral Byrd. This map has been restored by Dmitri from Russia with suggestions of mine, Idia Lenkar. Known by my YouTube channel Flat Earth Benjo, I asked Dmitri to include the Bermuda Triangle and Point Nemo, a place deep in the Pacific where NASA buries rockets. Then Robert Tazi, a professional mapmaker, came along and enhanced the map even more. There are many people now selling this map online, but if you could order it from my online store, I would greatly appreciate it. Visit my online store now and order one of the items. I humbly thank you. <laughs>